All right. I am trying to check out the FFT option on the Siglent SDS 1104X 500 mega sample 100 megahertz scope here. I haven't used the FFT. I really actually am doing any electronics anymore, but 20 years ago I used to have an audio precision network. I think it was like $15,000 or something. But now I've cobbled together, you know, a pretty vintage set of audio test. Here's an old Heath kit, pink and white noise source. I actually built this from the kit in grad school. And check this out, an old Radio Shack 9 volt battery power amp. This is a, what, like a quarter watt amp, and it's taking in the noise. The white noise. Pink noise. It's actually a pseudo-random, it's a digital chip in there that generates a pseudo-random pulse strain. And if you look at the output, you can actually see it's a square wave output coming out on the chip. But once it gets through the amplifier, which has a you know, roll-off, then it looks like a this uh, kind of just a series of triangles which would be your square wave going through a, you know, audio amp. So now, on the other piece of, you're about the same age as this old oscillator. This is a, it's a nice analog sine oscillator. Uh, and this, I don't know how old it, uh, about the same vintage. So this scope has a lot of uh, math options. So to look at the spectrum of this white noise source through the amp. You go to the math, and I had already set it up. But so once you enable math, then you can choose your math operator, and you've got math. Um, Arithmetic plus, so you can add channels, multiply channels, derivative, integral, root, and then FFT. And then you pick the source, and then you can configure what kind of FFT, how many points, points tells you your frequency resolution, it's the inverse, you know, the record length versus uh, frequency resolution. So right now, I've already zoomed it, it's got uh, centered at 39.5 kilohertz and five divisions it goes to 89.5, so that's five kilohertz per division. And windowing, so there's rectangle, Blackman, Hanning, Hamming, flat top. I used to do a lot of FFTs and programming, uh, DSP programming way back for automatic test equipment and this was always the, the thing that was hard to pick or explain you know to managers and when you don't always necessarily want a window like if you know your signals purely repetitive and you have a nice sample of even cycles and you would pick w rectangle instead of the windowing but because they would introduce distortion but uh, I remember Hanning as being a common one. I don't remember, it's been so long, I don't remember the subtle details of, you know, it's, if you're interested in power measurement versus harmonic distortion or something. And then you can have the split screen or pick full screen on one 
which is nice. And then averaging is very nice for, uh, see if you don't go away from averaging and you have this noisy signal, it's just going to bounce all, all over. So, uh, max hold is good for like looking at uh, distortion or something if you want to get your, a peak on the distortion and harmonic. But averaging is good for like frequency response. So, I'm just averaging 8 right here, and you would select that with this multi purpose knob. And then the next thing would be to pick uh, the resolution. And when it starts off, it's always full resolution, like up to megahertz. But in this case, we know, uh, and also if you want decibels, uh, the units right now are dB volts RMS. Assume. And the assumed external load is only if you're going dB milliwatts, I guess. Uh, for power into a load, like for audio or RF. And uh, vertical scale is 20 dB per division, which I think I had it down to 5. I went to 5, and go back to horizontal, here's where you can adjust the center and shift it, so that would be z 0 hertz where the trace starts, and uh, then hertz per division, right now it's 10 kilohertz per division, so we're going from 0 hertz to 90 hertz, because we've got 9 divisions. And of course this only does 20 kilohertz, but it seems to be putting out a signal only 30 decibels down at 90 kilohertz. Anyway, what is neat with this is you can do reference levels on your uh, FFTs, which so let's compare the white noise spectrum to the pink noise spectrum. So ideally, this would be flat if we didn't have the amplifier. So I'm going to store this as a reference. So let's say reference. The source of the reference is math. Location is uh, I get four locations, and you hit display. And up by default it's on, so it's the light blue, I don't know if it shows up here, but I can turn it off and then on. So let's see if I disconnect this, you can see the reference signal stays there. Now I'm going to put this back onto pink, and we can do a comparison. So, for instance, we can see the slope of the pink noise is different. The levels are different, and the slope is different. So, you would want to, if you just wanted to get the slope, and like decibels per octave, I guess, or, uh, rather than absolute level, but. So for every 10 kilohertz, it's going down, let's see, it goes two divisions and 20 kilohertz. So we're going uh, 10 dB for 20 kilohertz on pink noise and only about 5 dB for 10 kilohertz on white noise. So you can see the pink noise has a much attenu uh, uh, steeper roll-off. But and then you can save, always save a picture, just with the onto USB with the print button.
And then there were the other neat thing were the markers on it on the uh, FFT, which I haven't yet tried, but you, know, you would like to have a cursor, I guess, so you can scroll. But if you put the cursor button, you're going to get the cursor up on the time on the time waveform. Um, so to get to the uh, the alternative to to the cursor on the FFT or the uh, on the tools menu, see, this is the main FFT menu and it has the vertical, horizontal, then tools, tools, and it gives you, it would detect the peaks, I guess, and that's if you have harmonics, and you can show a table of the peaks, let's see what happens if we do that, but there aren't well, here's the table up here, but you'd have to turn off the time waveform to see that. So let's use the markers or the alternative to the cursors, I guess, when you're in FFT. So markers on, and uh, you can enable the marker on and then set the frequency. Right there's zero. Oh, here's a so here. Got a marker one, and I've set it on eight kilohertz. And it's, oh, it's showing me. Uh, Trying to find out where, if there's any information on this marker where it's shown. And then you can jump it to the next peak. <laughs> Which there isn't one, so I guess it disappeared. Went back to zero. So I go back to manual setting of the marker to... Let's see... Nine kilohertz, ten kilohertz, and marker. Oh, there's an automatic set markers on peaks or markers on harmonics. I can show the table. Oh, so the table, the show table button shows the marker, marker one, and value. I put uh, the time signal up. I see marker one is at minus 18 dBV right there. Oh, and you can show the frequency. Oh, and there's delta between markers. That's nice. So there's three options you can enable separately. Show table. I should zoom on that. Huh? Show table, show frequency, show delta. There we are with the table. Now let's put another marker on. We'll go hit the back button and tools. Marker control, marker number two. Show marker on and put it at frequency uh, about 20. So this would let you do like decibels per decade or something. Uh, in this case, octave for 10 kilohertz to 20 kilohertz. So now I've got two markers and I can see the amplitude at each one, the frequency at each one, and the delta in decibels between each one and the delta frequency. So that's very nice, and then you can just do a print screen and save it. So for doing distortion measurements, or, uh, 
Anyway, it's really well done for a relatively inexpensive scope. I mean, that's a very powerful option. And it's the first time I've played with it. I haven't used it. I've had this scope for about a year now. Anyway, that was interesting.